This is Neil Schneider for MTVS TV at Seagraph 2014. The exhibit is 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 closed for the evening, so we got a nice quiet access to the Cybrith virtualizer. Yes. To my immediate right is Tanjai Chakmak, and I read the card only to make sure that I pronounced it properly. I hope I did. It was quite good, yes. <laughs> so before before we talk about the Cybrith virtualizer, maybe you tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, what what did you do prior to working on this? Well, what shall I tell about myself? Um, I have began to work on the virtualizer 2012 uh, and everything began with the experiment with the V mode. Uh, I love to play computer games and I was uh, I had enough of being in front of a screen. I just wanted to be inside these beautiful worlds. And as I started with the experiment uh, with the V mode, I, I managed to control the cur cursor of uh, Quake 3. And I'm a big Quake 3 fan. Mm -hmm. And so as I managed to control it with the V-Mode, I felt much more immersed because there wasn't the mouse between my gun in the game. There was directly the, the movements of the V-Mode. And so I thought, okay, when that works and I can control my, um, my um, weapon in the game, how can I walk through the game? I thought, uh, yeah, there are HMDs. And actually I started the idea before I knew about the Oculus Rift. It was about in July. And I, I, it wasn't so much a, a worry about HMDs. It was, um, I, I was lo just looking for a solution to walk inside uh, these virtual worlds without being translated physically in the, in the reality. So you don't toss against walls and all this stuff. And that's how everything began. Now, this is a, a work of engineering. I mean, this is. I, I mean, if we look at the Cyberth virtualizer, it's got moving parts. You're moving in circles, jumping, crouching. Do you have an engineering background? Like, how? What? What led to the ingenuity of, of putting this product together? Um, well, I did uh, a higher technical school for mechanical engineering in Austria, and then I started to study technical physics. And yes, I have I have a background of mechanical engineering and have constructed it in the computer. And um, I had a lot of partners who helped me. Uh, companies in Austria uh, from the metal industry. Uh, I was I was visiting them and telling them about the idea, and then told him, yeah, I have, I want to build uh, something for my uh, diploma uh, work for the master work uh, of the university, and I told him about the idea and asked about sponsoring parts. And so I showed them the constructions and they helped me. It was so great. Wonderful. So can you elaborate a bit how it works? I mean, obviously there's a disc in the center. You've got these braces around. Can you explain how everything interacts? Yes, the virtualizer works uh, with the low, uh, low friction principle. That means you're getting inside the ring construction and have a harness. And when you want to make a move, make a step, uh, the uh, friction uh, force is uh, absorbed by the ring construction and you glide, you slide over the um, base. The base is a, a material which guarantees a friction coefficient to usual socks and we have here uh, the first time uh, overshoes with textiles um, which guarantees um, natural movements so you can really uh, turn around, you can walk and you can run. Now just, just so people have a, an understanding, uh, like when I T try this out. I put overshoes on top of, of my yes. regular footwear. Why? Why did you do that? Uh, we have uh, now the first time we tried it with the uh, overshoes because we realized in conventions, uh, the people don't like it that uh, to put off the shoes. The people want to use their own shoes. And then is, there is the other problem with the hygienic. There are different people with different sweat, and that the sweat would be maybe on the plate. So the it's of hygienic reasons and for the reasons, uh, the comfortable reasons. So we have invented this, <laughs> I mean it's a prototype, these overshoes with the material, with textile materials and yes, it works very well. <laughs> very good, very good. So what, what range of movement do you have? Uh, obviously you can walk and run, what else can you do? Um, yeah, because uh, the ring construction is vertically movable, you can crouch down, you can jump up, you can also turn around 360 degrees and you can walk in crouched positions, you can walk backwards, you can uh, strafe to the side, all this.
Wonderful. So, and it, is this like a one-to-one -one relationship between like where every time you move your foot, that's what's going to be detected? Um, for now, we have uh, keyboard emulation, uh, simul uh, yeah, emulation and controller emulation, but we're working on the SDK, so in future it will be one-to-one. -one. So uh, we can measure the speed of the feed, we can measure the angle of the feed, and this information can be uh, brought into the game, and so you can have different speeds. Is it... Do you have an accurate registration of where each foot is? Um, our system uh, detects uh, optical the speed of the feet and the angle. Okay. So the system for now does not know where exactly the feet is, but they, it knows where it moves. Okay, very good. Come back a little bit so we could get uh, you in oh. the camera shot here. Um, so v very impressive. I mean, it, it's quite something. I mean, you, you step in, I take it. Uh, now, the harness that I use, is this the final harness? No, this is just a climbing harness we have prepared for the prototypes, but in future we uh, will have our own harness for the virtualizer. Now, what about, you, you know, when I look at a, a device like this, you know, one of the things that people may be concerned with is safety. Now, is there any risk of this toppling over? I mean, it, it felt secure when I was in it, but maybe you could elaborate as to, you know, how it is yeah. safe. I mean, we have uh, we were on the way with the second prototype and a lot of conventions. We had over 2,000 people inside, and nobody hurt themselves. And we have also constructed the beginners function, so you can lock the vertical movement of the ring construction to train it to get used to it. Then you unlock it and use it as a sitting function. Then you can crouch down, you can sit down, you can jump, and you can use all the movements, and you are used to it. And I have to say, I've never injured myself <laughs> while using it but I've injured myself in the workshop while building the prototypes <laughs> so you you've absorbed the pain <laughs> so others don't have to go through that I also wanted to mention that ah! I'm very this is awesome <laughs> I also wanted to mention that I I got a lot of help from my friends from my student colleagues and from my family and we have built uh, with my brother, he helped me a lot in the workshop of my father. We've built the first prototypes there and uh, yes, I want to mention that. Now, very good. Obviously a lot of work, a lot of help went into this and it, it, it does look polished. I mean, you look at it, it doesn't look like a, you know, a Kickstarter. It looks like something that's, you know, three quarters of the way to, to release. I mean, everything fits together nicely. How many of these have you manufactured so far? Uh, thank you. We, we are giving our best that the product will be um, uh, finished, optimized for the people. We don't want to sell um, untested things or um, not fully um, developed things. Um, we have built now uh, about, uh, yes, it's six prototypes now. This is the, no, I'm sorry, yes, yes, yeah. You can see it on the Kickstarter page. We have uh, four prototypes. We begin from the zero. It was in about uh, 2012, July, August at this time then we have the first prototype in, in, in at the end of the year 2012 until begin 2013 then we built the second prototype for the gamescom that was very um yeah it wasn't unfinished the paint one day before we drove to the gamescom at the way to the gamescom we coded some programs and at the gamescom itself we coded the back was walking it was really uh, sleepless times <laughs> like here <laughs> and <clears throat> this is the third prototype, um, and after the third prototype, we have now made um, additional two for the Gamescom, and we have also made one. Okay, it's six prototypes. No, seven. I can't count. A lot of work. A lot of work went into this. <laughs> well, actually, so, I, uh, go ahead. Yes, uh, we have constructed uh, the prototype for our partners and one for YI Technology. Now, to set uh, YI technology, okay, but by the way, I noticed that you're, it's not here, uh, like in what uh, um, Tom is testing, but uh, I understand you're working with Prio VR as well. Can you elaborate a bit on that? Uh, yeah, sure. We have uh, the Prio VR here, the suit. We want to show it. And uh, the collaboration is great because they've sent us a suit and we have connected it, uh, fusioned it with our technology. And it was just amazing. It was so amazing because you were inside the virtual world with your hands, with your arms, with your legs. And we, ha we have realized the three times decoupling with the locomotion device. So you can look in another direction, walk in another direction, shoot in another direction. And you feel so immersed that you really think this is real. 
Now, set, to set people's expectations, now, when I went in, I, you were a great help getting me suited up in this. I mean, I, you know, yes. I had to step in, and obviously the, the brace had to be done properly. Uh, when people get their, let's say they're buying this on Kickstarter, by the way, congratulations on your continued Thank success you. with your Kickstarter. Um, will it be something that one person can, can easily get in safely without needing assistance from others? For sure, yes. Uh, if you know the system, it's no problem. You just put the uh, ring construction down, step inside, put it up and uh, close it and you're ready to go. And we have showed it in a video. I did that in about nine seconds. And we have constructed all, also the arm for the Oculus Rift. Unfortunately, we couldn't bring it here because of the transportation of this arm. It's a prototype arm, which is quite big for now. I'm sorry. It's better, right? Go ahead. And <laughs> Tom is great. As yes, and um, yes, you step inside, and it, took, it takes about nine seconds, so no problem to use it alone. No, no wonderful, problem. wonderful. So when when will this be readily available for Kickstarter backers? Um, we are um, we will produce the virtualizer at the end of this year and uh, the shipment will be at March. So if, the, uh, if people want the virtualizer, they can get it now on Kickstarter, they can pre-order it. And after the shipment of the virtualizer, um, um, Kickstarter virtualizers, um, we will enter the regular market later. So a few months later, it will be in the summer of 2015. Now, one thing we haven't talked about, haptics. Tell us about your, your haptics version. The haptics version is is so great. I, I you can't imagine. You're you're in you're inside the virtualizer, and then it begins with the vibration, and you feel it. It's like uh, just imagine you're in the battlefield, and the grenade explodes, and then you feel the haptic, and you really think your brain really thinks you are in the battle, or you are walking through Skyrim. A giant dragon is landing in front of you, and you you feel the vibrations. And now um, we are uh, working on the SDK so that the vibrations can be uh, modified. So if, you, if uh, developers implement our SDK, they can uh, make hot spots of vibrations, for example. Uh, when you go near these spots, it vibrates even more and more. And you can also make vibration um, modulation. So you could feel somehow mystical uh, vibrations out of mystical uh, objects, stones like this. Very good. Now, one more thing. There is a practice period. I mean, people when people get this, I, I think you know to set their expectations. Looking at your videos, you're you know you obviously you enjoy this, you benefit from it, and other people do as well. But it it, it doesn't happen in 30 seconds. I take it there's a little bit yes. of training involved. Can you talk about what training's involved to to make this work? Uh, yes, you need a few minutes uh, to walk inside the virtualizer uh, because it it is not 100% uh, walking real. And we are going to um, support these um, these people with videos where we show it how to walk in the virtualizer, how to use it properly. And yes, you need some minutes. Uh, I think um, we have realized at um, different conventions, after 15 minutes, after 30 minutes, it's totally okay. And uh, we, we have to say uh, additionally to that, uh, that uh, it's very subjective. Some people uh, have it in a few seconds. And some people need a little bit longer. Okay, yes. very good. Well, c well, congratulations on your continued success. I keep hearing the Cyberth Virtualizer uh, about it at Seagraph. People talk about it. A lot of people are very intrigued by it. So I, I look forward to seeing what you develop from this. Thank you very much, Neil. You're always welcome. Thank you so much. So this is Neil Schneider at the Cyberth Virtualizer exhibit Seagraph 2014. We will, of course, be back with more. Thank you for watching. Thank you. You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Freaking great at this. Ooh. I got through. How the, was it? I got through the ballroom, the big grand area, the asylum.